So Jeff Cavalier and Mike Isertel both came out with a video today on how to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time, aka a recomp. Now, I did a video yesterday called the Skinny Fat Solution where I talked about how recomping is probably the best way to go about things, and I don't think this is a coincidence. I'm pretty sure both of them watch my channel, and more than that, I'm pretty sure I'm a major influence on both of their content. So I can't say I'm really all that surprised. I mean, my content is pretty dank. Now, first of all, I want to say that I agree with the vast majority of what both of them said, even though their perspectives are completely different. Yes, I agree with what most of Jeff Cavalier said. Shocker. I think it's intellectually honest to assess the words that are coming out of someone's mouth, not just the person. If someone who I don't really respect or agree with says something that is respectable and agreeable, I'm going to say it's respectable and agreeable. I think that's the intellectually honest thing to do. So first of all, let's get into Jeff Cavalier's opinions on body recomposition. He says, yes, it is absolutely possible. And it's maybe not as fast as bulking and cutting, but it is certainly a viable strategy. So first he suggests a 10 to 15% deficit. Honestly, for a recomp, you don't even need a deficit. You can eat at exactly maintenance. That's what a recomp is. So I'm not sure why he talked about a deficit. You can gain muscle in a deficit, but eating at maintenance is probably going to be a little bit more optimal. You lose a little bit of fat, you gain a little bit of muscle and everything's gravy. Then he talks about protein. He suggests 0.8 grams per pound, which is exactly what I said in my video yesterday. <clears throat> Again, not a coincidence, although that is what the research shows as well. So maybe, maybe we just both read the same research. He says you can go up to one gram per pound, nothing wrong with that, but you don't need to do that either. He also made a really good point, which I think a lot of people ignore, cost, financial cost. Protein is a lot more expensive than carbs and fats. And if you are on a budget, you know, that one to 0.8 gram per pound difference can be pretty significant. He also talks about nutritional quality. So not just shoving gummy bears in your mouth, but actually sticking to quality foods, whole foods, foods that actually have nutrition that can actually get you results. Uh, yeah, just because something fits your macros doesn't mean it's the optimal diet. Macros are important. Calories are important. The size of your surplus or deficit is definitely important, but the actual foods that you consume are very, very important as well. He then talks about resistance training, which should be pretty much a no-brainer, uh, but I would say optimal resistance training is actually important as well. A lot of people go to the gym. How many are even close to optimal in terms of the program? I would say probably less than 20% of people. There are a lot of people who go nowhere with their resistance training or simply don't push things hard enough to see results. So optimal resistance training, I think, is something that is key, not just resistance training, which could mean something that is complete shit. He then talks about cardio, how it's not really needed. You don't need to do cardio to do this body recomposition thing, to gain muscle, to lose fat. It's mostly resistance training and diet, although cardio can help to speed up the process or allow you to eat a little bit more food and get in more quality nutrition. He then talks about how sometimes bulking and cutting can go off the rails. You bulk, 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 and you just get fat. And honestly, I see that quite a bit as well. So that is definitely an argument for controlled bulking. So either counting your macros or counting your weight gain or just looking in the mirror and saying, okay, time to pull the plug on the bulk. What the hell was that? Volcanic eruption. Try cutting. Time to go back to a recomp or a mini cut or just a straight up cut. I see this all the time, people who just turn into perma bulkers, and that's something to definitely avoid. I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain. Get in my belly. Furthermore, turning your bulk into an excuse to just have a shitty diet is not something that's good. If you can't bulk on a completely clean diet, that's fine. A lot of people can't, especially if they have a low appetite. But you should not only be eating pizza and cheeseburgers. Uh, that is not going to be great for your health. And ultimately, that is something that should be important to you. Now, one thing that I appreciated is that he actually acknowledged that a recomp will probably take longer than a bulk and a cut or a cut and a bulk. 
And this isn't necessarily 100% a bad thing. I think for beginners, there's not going to be a huge difference. For more advanced athletes, on the other hand, I think bulking and cutting or cutting and bulking is probably the way to go. It's just going to save a lot more time. So I appreciated that he actually acknowledge this. Mike was very, very careful in his wording. One thing that I didn't really like is the title of his video, lose fat while gaining muscle, nutrition myths number 10. Now, recomping is not a myth. It happens all the time and it does happen to an appreciable degree. I think more than he let on. He was sort of begrudging and saying, okay, well, it does happen to a small extent some of the time. Uh, but no, it happens all the time. I see it in Literally the majority of my clients, not the vast majority, but over 50% for sure, recomp. This is shown in the scientific literature all the time to a pretty significant degree. It's not like you gain half a kilo of muscle and you lose half a kilo of fat. No, it happens all the freaking time. I'll link an article by Menno Henselmans talking about how it's extremely common. And if your coach says something like, yeah, I can teach you how to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. I'm a fucking guru. No, okay? It should be expected. It should be the norm because it's not that hard, especially if you're a beginner, especially if you're not that lean, especially if your diet was not optimized or your program was not optimized. It should be normal to a big degree. He does make a distinction between technical gains and notable gains. Now, technical gains are gains that are measurable in a lab through a DEXA scan, barely, but they're not really noticeable. Notable gains are the opposite. They are gains where you walk into the gym and you're like, wow, I'm a lot stronger or a lot bigger. Other people notice them. People think, okay, what are you doing? What is your program? What are you on? That kind of thing. So there is a distinction there, but I think notable gains through a recomp for a lot of people is certainly possible, especially if you are lean. Now, it's going to be harder to do when you are lean, but the gains that you do make are going to be more noticeable. If you gain muscle and you're 30% body fat, it's honestly hard to see. If you gain muscle and you are 13% body fat, it's much, much, much easier to see. If you put five pounds of muscle on someone who is lean, that's a huge difference. You can actually see, and it's actually a very, very large difference. Plus, the scientific literature shows that notable gains, gaining multiple kilos of muscle while losing multiple kilos of fat, is certainly possible. In fact, I would say it's the norm. It happens all the time. It's not something that's magic. It's not something that is unusual. It's not something that's just for beginners. It's not something that's just for people who are fat or completely new to the gym. It happens pretty damn frequently. And to be perfectly honest, the majority of my clients, not the vast majority, but certainly over 50%, recomp to a noticeable degree, okay? And they're not on special sports supplements. As far as I know, I'm an online coach. I can't like slap the steroids out of their hands, but I assume they're natural, okay? They're not like taking anything. And yet they recomp to a noticeable degree. If you go from a poor program, and most people in the gym are on poor programs, to a more optimal program, you're gonna see results. If you weren't really pushing things before and now you do, you're gonna see results. If you had a shitty diet, you go to a better diet, you're gonna see results. All of these factors add up to where you can absolutely gain large amounts of muscle and lose large amounts of fat eating around maintenance. It happens all the freaking time. And I really think this is a difference in perspective. Athlean X is more of a channel for beginners. Mike Isratel is more of a channel for more advanced athletes. Maybe not everyone is advanced, but certainly there is a very, very big difference in audience. Mike Isratel is thinking more about an advanced athlete. And for them, bulking and cutting does make a lot more sense. For a beginner, a recomp is very, very feasible and very, very viable. It makes a lot of sense, as I said in the video yesterday that both of them watched. That being said, I think it's best to go by results. If you're trying to recomp and it doesn't seem like you're going anywhere, well, that's a sign that recomping is probably not for you. It could be your program, could be your diet, could be a lot of other stuff. But on the other hand, it might be time to cut or bulk based on your goals. So eventually, it will become impossible to recomp. I'm not saying it's possible forever. Obviously, you're not going to be able to like pull out this party trick of exchanging fat for muscle forever. Okay, otherwise, you'd end up like... Ronnie Coleman. It's just not going to happen.
But I think for a lot of people, maybe more people than Mike Isretel lets on, it is absolutely a viable strategy. Perhaps another difference in opinion is that Mike Isertel doesn't mind going up in body fat percentage a little bit more, whereas Athlete X obviously prizes leanness, it's in his name, his last name, <laughs> uh, a lot more. So definitely pretty interesting how they're both right. I'm not saying they're both wrong, or either of them are wrong, uh, but they do have quite different perspectives when it comes to what they suggest. So I think the main takeaways are that it's definitely not a myth, it definitely exists, it exists to a fairly large degree, but it won't work forever, and for more advanced athletes, I think bulking and cutting is going to be faster, more effective, and more efficient. But if you really want to stay lean, I think a recomp is viable. You just have to realize it's probably going to be a little bit slower. All right, that is all for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, do YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. You need a simple and effective diet to lose weight. You know, that hurts my feelings. I've tried going on a diet, you know. The zone. You know, carbs are the enemy, you know. We don't like carbs, you know what I mean? Oh. Who's your friend? <laughs>